Welcome to another episode of Not For The Weak Minded. Now, this episode is about the Eolithic debate and my discoveries from Sardinia, which I didn't realise I captured until recently when I began to see things more clearly. Um, when you start looking at things with your eyes instead of listening to their lies, you will realise that, you know, you've been lied to your whole entire lives. Now, the Illithid debate is about the tool industries going back in time. Now, this all stems from Sir Charles Darwin's theory of evolution. Um, one particularly uh, anthropologically speaking and two geologically speaking they're both involved in this and with with the notion of the Paleolithic um, to the Neolithic transition where the you know the craftsmen essentially got better at their trade and begin creating more complex pieces of lithic work so that was dubbed you know the simplicity to complexity theory by sir john lubbock and they both came out in 1859 now prior to this the understanding of geological principles was helped by a guy called sir charles lyle and he basically brought out the notion that you know the, the tertiary period and and this co you know the all this no, uh, nonsense to do with microbial life you know starting off and then you know evolving into different types of beings you know when you look at the what they try and say they say you know 96 percent of life got eradicated after the first epoch you know and out of those four percent they have managed to evolve into different creatures that then came on land and after each cat you know maybe not that epoch but you know the third epoch when they come out of land and then the fourth epoch when you know the mammals and stuff it's it's a lie you know geology if you look with your eyes proves that they are lying to you outright you know and that time is not you know the earth isn't millions of years old so going on the notion that this the paleolithic industries were themselves too advanced to be the first created by man um they were looking for during the you know that period of time and uh, up to the 1920s um eoliths which are basically a crude implement that man might have you know must have first used and created in order to get more advanced and then to the paleolithic stage and then more advanced to the neolithic stage you know this is logic and when you do research into this debate itself now i'm not actually going to go into the debate really i'm just going to show how the debate really just like the paleolithic um doesn't really matter you know the the true stone implements were are now are being used by the first peoples you know and yeah giants and stuff back in time back in the past and stuff and other beings and it but that was in the time of the giants like you know not the time of now and then the time of now you know the aborigines so to speak are using so-called you know neolithic stone tools they're not using you know other tools which suggests that you know going on evolutionals theory that these people must have learned it at a previous stage in their development which is not the case either you know they've proved it otherwise up you know that they just come out of nowhere and they knew knew these tool developments um so what it's really about is the notion that 
Well, just basically confronting the fear of evolution, you know, outright, you know, and, and the reason why I've highlighted he's a sir is because, and he's a sir as well, is because the, these people were rewarded for their great work in deceiving the masses, you know, these Freemasons, these secret societies, their whole thing is called the great work. You know, the great work in deceiving the masses. So they're knighted on their great work, you know. And these people are, are evil, you know. No word of a lie, you know. And, and people idolise these people, you know, Darwin and that. It, it's a joke. Anyway, moving on. So this obviously, the debate itself. Now, if you looked into it, you would discover that, you know, we found anatomical modern humans um, that are like us in every way and form in the so-called tertiary period. Now, you know, going on this, the tertiary period, you know, from 1.8 to 65 million years ago. And, you know, the evidence that's been covered up is, well... It's unbelievable, really. You know, they, they've twisted artifacts and remains and ignored other things to to create this perception of reality in the first place, which is why there's so much out there, so many discoveries, so many artifacts that, you know, out of place artifacts that do not fit their model. And therefore, you know, what that really is trying to say is that how can you how can you incorporate incorporate even you know truth when you're not even being told the whole truth about all artifacts you know you're not even incorporating that into the into the system you know and that's the same i can say one thing about the education system and about reality and about how it you know it's not true and, and it's all based on lies is the importance and the fundamental key role in this world is understanding the paranormal now none of those theories that the paranormal is not incorporated into any mainstream theory that's fact neither is ufology neither is cryptozoology you know the fact that yetis exist and there's been people out there hunting them and, and found evidence for them and documented them you know um not incorporated into you know the theory of evolution <laughs> You know, it's a joke. It's all a joke. All this is a lie. You know what? Moving on. You know, so what should we really be looking for? Um, well, when we look at our eyes, we begin to see very large animals, and as this humans. Now, all these photographs I'm showing at the beginning are from ExtremeRealityChat.com, and I will link a YouTube video down below where I got it from. Uh, as well as all the other thing, videos, you know, and information that I've put on here, so you can see for yourself where I got it from. You know, um, this, it's not, these pictures are nothing, you know, I mean, I've, there are um, turtles and all sorts of animals, you know, not just horses and elephants. So our elephants is, a, is the key one that I've picked on for later, during, you know for landscape and stuff. Is it going to load? There we go. Right. Now, I was not I was watching this on a different channel. But essentially it's, you know, Snow Leopard fighting and falling off his cliff. And... What I noticed in it, during it, and it, like I said, it didn't have wild in film India across the front of it. Now, it's a very distorted picture, but essentially there are things here that I've, I've, I've captured. Um, we'll go, we should move on to the picture itself. So, here is exactly what I captured. Now, again, going on the first lot of pictures, you know, these are clearly animals, 
Now on this, it's very hard to tell this area here particularly, but this guy over here, I mean this is clear as day. You know, you can see his eye and his eye, and it's a weird type of alien being. He's got a weird mouth, and you can see his shoulders going down, and he's holding this like jar. You know, looks like a jar, a red jar. And then, yeah, over here, you can see a face there, look, beyond him. And then, yeah, this thing here, looks like a rat of some kind. And then there's a gun being here but it's very you know perhaps his eye and his eye is there his mouth is there his nose is there and then there's a never being here but it's very faint and you sort of see it and then there's another one here it's sort of like you can see it if I zoom in a bit there's his eye and then his mouth is there like But yeah, some weird stuff. Uh, one of the cool ones, this one's a cool one. And this guy's like, eye there. And you can see his mouth. A bit covered a bit in snow with his nose. And then this one here, is topped it off, That's, is amazing. You know, look at the detail in the eye, look at the gleam in the eye. It's amazing. Clearly like some kind of, uh, you know, gr grey alien. Weird. And there, you know, this is just one photograph, and I keep, once you start seeing it, I, I mean, I watch a lot of stuff, and now that I've started to see the truth, I can't stop seeing it, and anything I watch, I just, you know, it takes me ages to watch it now, because I, I keep pausing it and looking at things, and looking at the landscape, and looking at things like this, you know, and it's, you know, it's clear as day, you know, self-evident if one, you know, you can't not say that this is nothing. You know, there's a leg, and this is some kind of entrails down here. You know, it's guts and stuff and stuff. So, as I was saying halfway through there, there what, what should we expect, really, if, it is, if the theory of evolution is false? And looking on what, you know, we've looked at so far, we should expect to see... You know, the time of the Titans, the time of the Giants, and the time of man. And this is hinted at in movies all the time. So, what are they trying to tell us in the movies? Because if you are really switched on to reality, you know that they're telling you the truth a lot of the times in the movie, and lying to your face in the news. This is reality, you know, they've inverted reality, you know, they want <laughs> boys to be girls and girls to be boys. It's not right, it's mental abuse. Uh, different subjects entirely. Moving on. So, just out of curiosity, anyone out there, what creature did this evolve from? Clearly it looks like he's wearing a helmet of some kind. Where's the carcicon? Over there. You know? It definitely looks like metal. You know, in this weird thing here. But yeah, strange, isn't it? So, your perception of reality is based on false principles. And this is just based on the theory of evolution and, and the geological counterpart of, you know, things evolving over millions of years, etc. You know, the Big Bang, it doesn't, you know, that doesn't exist. You know, it doesn't happen. We are at the centre of the universe and the universe is not forever expanding you know the cosmolog cosmological principles are f based on f are false you know the earth does not spin you know the sun is local and created and technology so is the moon anyway so as I was saying microbes did not evolve over millions of years and therefore gelatome is a lie as I was saying you know and not only that but the dating techniques and stuff. I mean, if you if you really want to check this out, um, on my playlist, go to geological um, principles, and on there you'll see, you know, things explaining why dating, carbon dating, and you know, isotopes and stuff like that. Not, maybe not isotopes because that's that's alright, but um, other 
dating techniques are truly horrendous lies. You know? Anyway, and evidence that you can see with your eyes versus the education system. Now, this is just a small part of the deception and there is so much to know. But once you understand that you have been lied to on it, you begin to understand that it's not just one small thing. You begin to see the truth and open up your mind and then actually go and look for these things, I would hope, you know? It's not just, I don't just hope you believe that I'm what I'm telling you. I want you to actually use your mind because you must realise it inside it, you know? You must use your energies in your heart to bring and manifest your will, you know? This is what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to wake people up so that we can manifest a better reality because we've been lied to, you know? We can have a better world. We are better than this. Much better than them. Anyway, so the whole point really of the Elific and the Paleolithic in this sort of presentation is not really going on about the debate itself as an, you know, an historical argument, but whether it really matters at all. Um, so we'll see. This is a picture from a friend in Italy and amazing photograph to be honest. No, it is cut. There is obviously parts of this that are missing from either side. But what I noticed was, you know, this being here with his eye and an eye there, mouth, you know, big head. And then there was another guy over here, like an ape. You know, you can see it, like a chimp-like thing. And then next to it, there's a a bird beak. You know, you can see the eye there sticking out. Impressive. Now, <laughs> this may sound out of there, and it prob you know, and for most people that won't use their eyes, you know, they won't see it. But there are other things in this image, and there is another theory which is. Well, I'm going to get to it near the end, but essentially why we've been lied to about what is life is because <laughs> of what we're really seeing in the photographs. So, for example, right, just here, you see how this tree looks like, oh, what are you doing? See how this tree looks like a fox? You know, and there's faces in the trees. Like, you know, the faces, that they have literally beings in them. You know, see this guy down here? Um, and this guy over here. And once you start looking at your photographs and looking at the trees and the wildlife, particularly like, you know, the landscapes and stuff, of, you, you'll see it, you know, it's clear as day, you, you'll catch all these beings in there. Never on there a lot. Now, this is based on this theory is out there, I'm telling you now, and, and we'll get to it in a bit. I'll just move on to the geological stuff for now. More stuff. So, I can't remember where I got this photograph from, and wherever it was, you know, I spotted it. I thought, that's amazing, absolutely amazing. Clear as day, hand out the sand. Hand in the sand. Now, this is a picture I took in Sardinia, and what I thought it shows is two very large headed beings and you can see the eye and the eye and this is where the nose and the mouth are in there and an eye there and an eye there and his nose and his mouth there but what I really noticed is the different colour between them and highly speculate that we can actually get at what geology is by looking at the colour of it because these beings have different colours, you know, and different skin textures, and although it would be a massive work to catalogue these things, we can do it, absolutely, you know, we can we can do it, you know, people are out there now doing these things, I mean, Roger from Mud Fossil University being one on YouTube, I mean, if you haven't seen his work, check it out, man, it's, you know, he, he's he's been out doing this for like 10 odd years, probably more, you know, 
I'm new to this. I've just got a poignant message with it. So here you see, looks like an eye, and this looks like a slope down type of elephant. There is this pole and pole, and then it goes back there, and then back here you see something on another animal, which is sort of like slope back, slope down. I know the picture's blurry, um, and this is in Arizona. That's my uncle's photo. And this one, again, I can't remember where I took it from. If you know this, please let me know. And essentially, yeah, you can see an elephant. Like, you see the tusk come down. You can see, uh, you know, the front there goes down. And then you can see the back leg come down this way. You know, clear as day. And then this here, this long, 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 long. It's more than likely a tree, a fallen tree, but I can't prove that, but yeah, it's prob probably that. So, I'm going into Michael Tellinger's uh, recent discoveries and his presentation, which I'm going to link down below. And I highly recommend you watch it and look into all his work because this man is a legend, this man is trying to save the world, he's trying to change the world, you know, he's created a movement called Ubuntu, which is based on contribution-based society, you know, socialism, in a, in, in a sense, but not what you think it is, you know, um, free energy based on ancient principles of sound, you know, harnessing the energies of the earth, amazing stuff, you know, I mean, if people realised this work and listened to him, he could he he alone could change the world. If people listen to him alone, you know. But there's many many people out there trying to do it. You know, we are trying hard to change the pe wake people up and realise that we can do it. You know, but you must understand that re your perception of reality. You know, that it's the most important thing. You know, you must understand that you've been lied to, and you must understand the enemy and why they've done this to you and about creation and about who created us and you know it wasn't just one person you know it was a, a federation it was a council decision to bring the flood you know that Enki disobeyed to save Noah which is Zusudra in the Sumerian literature now obviously I did say it related at the front to the Sumerian literature but this is what it really does because the Bible goes to the ancient Sumerian texts and the Sumerian texts have so much truth in it about our origins and reality um, about where we come from that you know they, they don't want you to know the truth at all they're afraid of us when we have the truth because we particularly when we have our pineal gland open we, we would destroy these demonic beings from our world we would no longer have it we wouldn't take we wouldn't be tolerant to sacrificing children to bring demons into this world. No more, you know? People need to wake up and this is what's exactly what's going on. This is how it works. This is how you bring them in. This is how you put them into your body. Don't fall for it. Anyway, Michael Tallinger's lecture. A heart that is twice the size. Now... In his presentation, he was talking about basically this before this photograph, and a surgeon just so happened to walk up the road, and he went straight out to him and went, "That's a bleeding heart in your hand," you know. He went, "I know, because I'm a surgeon," and straight away he had it verified on the spot that you know what he found was a heart. So, but this is a heart twice the size. Now this jawbone is. 20 times the size and it's this part back here of a human and again it's you know incredible really I mean this is nothing you know this is small minute portion of his discoveries because I've got a lot to talk about and you can check out this video himself you know it, it don't it talks about so many things that are important you know your concepts of reality how rarely where it's a toroidal fields and all sorts of things. 
I'm not getting into it. But essentially, these are ribs, and they were four times the size. So there is a evidence in the landscape of the of massive animals, as well as fossilized. Mud, you know, mud fossilized parts of humans or ever animal or alien beings yeah and you know as I was saying earlier about the thousands of out of place artifacts um, and this is a biblical thing about there was a one world culture in the ancient past and there are there you know the absolute evidence is but they're never going to tell you that you know because that culture was far greater than what we could ever be what we could be but currently we cannot be because we have we don't see the truth you know we don't we for what it is Our, uh, so but that's what I was going to uh, I did this as a presentation sort of but it was only 10 minutes so I mean how the hell you meant to disprove the theory of evolution in 10 minutes is beyond me but anyway I tried so I just put the questions out there, you know, are these part, body parts very, you know, for the lithic tools, various parts of animals? So now we're going into my discoveries, the mud fossil of Noragi of Sardinia. Now as you can see in my, this first photograph, you can clearly see a bee in there, and a bee in there, and another one there. Now this is part of a collapsed wall from the Noragi and so is this and you can see a, a weird bee in there and because it's a bit blurred out but you can see a bee in there and others down here I've got other photos, this one here you can see here, eye and eye and a nose and a mouth but we've got plenty of other photos so just to let you know that's what exactly what a Noragi looks like um, a lot of them, they say that they were built as a, a fort of some kind, but no defensive tools were ever found there. And quite frankly, they're not going to get that. Answer. You're not going to get the truth out of mainstream archaeology. Full stop. So there, I, I believe it's to do with energy anyway and transmission of sound energy and frequency. And, Harnessing energy for, you know, good purposes. Moving on. So here, you begin to see, you know, an eye. There's an eye. You know, and there's another guy over here, look. No one here. This one's cool. Although the picture's blurry, I know. Once you get your eyes focused, you can see this guy here, like the nose and his mouth. And this one here looks like a grey alien. You can see the eye there. And his cheekbone and his mouth is there. And like, I'm not saying you know, every single rock is a face, because it isn't. But what I'm saying is, is that these mud fossils were cut and used in the construction of this Naragi and therefore it must have been built after the biblical flood whenever that date would be which is the time of the titans uh, time of the giants, sorry what turned the titans to stone on the other hand uh, is a mystery, but I, I have another theory. Well, there are several theories, but I'm not saying them though. Anyway, some kind of goat's head. Two goat's heads in the wall of some kind. And then there's a bee in there. And then this one was a bit like a weird looking bee, and it was like an eye there and an eye there. It's a nose and a mouth. But yeah. Again, this guy over here. You can see his, his, his mouth. 
and his eye and his eyes there and there's his nose he's sticking that way and there are ours. I've probably missed a couple already but I've been going on for a while there's one there at the top you can see his eye and his eye and his nose and his mouth but I didn't see these things when I was there oh this one's a cool one no, oh, look at this thing. Black eye there, look, and you can see the black eye there. His head's there. If you notice next to it, it looks like kind of like a red. See how the colour's different to that one? That colour's different to that. This is what I'm talking about. We can get out the different species of beings by the colour of the rocks. Uh, yeah, so this being looks weird. Look at it. That is weird. You can see an eye there though, but yeah, should we have a... What's it doing? Moving on. Again, there were other things. You can see how like, this one's up, it's been cut. You can see the face there and an eye there. And there's another one there, like, a face. It's been sort of mashed. Never one that bear like that one. Eye in an eye in the mouth. Like I said, I'm not saying all these things because they're clearly not, but a lot of this is made by the same coloured rock. So, like this rock and this rock, are, that rock and that rock are the same. Where these two rocks are different, and therefore they might be different beings. This is what I'm getting at, so the Naragi's made by made of different types of alien human beings. And this, I'm not sure if this is graffiti or this is uh, artwork, I'm not sure, but I don't think so. It was in a minute. Now, I'm not saying that all of this is, you know, I think this may be artwork. You know, but I can't say for certain. Oh, but there's some of it over here as well. I just thought that interesting in the photograph. There's obviously graffiti there, but you've seen this before, you know, this type of being before. It looks alien looking, you know, in the sort of indigenous you know, artworks. This thing there, look. Weird. And you see, this is the other angle of that being there, look. You see his mouth, and his eye, and his eye, and his nose. Weird being there, look. There's an eye. It's like an animal. It's like, like an otter or something, you know? Like, you see, like fur, whiskers, of some kind. And there's another weird being, look. This thing. See his mouth and his nose, and then sort of like slap. Maybe he's got like an helmet on or something, I don't know. Strange. This guy down here, look, you can see definitely a head of some kind. Fascinating. Uh, now, these were at similar places, but I've zoomed in on them for part of the presentation. But you can see that there's an eye there, and then the mouth here, and the nose there. And then this guy over here, you can see the eye there, look. The eye there, mouth, nose, nose, whopping head. And then this wicked thing here is weird. I mean, look at that. That is nuts. Look at it. Eye there, eye there, massive mouth. 
If you look carefully in the waterfall, you can actually see faces in it as well. So you can see one there, an eye there. So this was a uh, from a video on what's Jojo, and I'll put the link below. And archaeologists found the skeleton under this tree after it toppled over in Ireland. Now what I thought I noticed straight away was why they bought why are they putting this blue rope around? And then I realised that they can see the same thing I can, which is exactly these beings. So there's an eye there, an eye there, a mouth. And there's an eye there, an eye there, a, a, a nose. So we can zoom in a bit. Oops. You know, see this guy here? An eye there, an eye there, a mouth. Now what is this doing on the bottom of a tree? You know? Like, have we been lied to about roots, for example, and life, and how, what it's made of? Or is life made up of these beings? I mean, sounds preposterous, right? Like, you've got all these different type of beings inside you that all work together. That could be alien and <laughs> all sorts of things. <laughs> but if this tree is life, right? and these beings are actually part of the tree then surely there must be more evidence to support this right look at his face there look I mean I just can't ex you know I I've tried to explain this so many uh, I've tried to explain this and the only fear I got is that we have no idea what life is what, ma what life is really made of I can't explain it, you know. Look at his face there, look. I mean, they're everywhere, you know. You can. Um. So, moving on. Mud fossils and petrification. So, what happens in petrification process to turn something living into stone? As I was saying earlier. Well, to Titans, not quite sure, but the mud fossils, more than likely, was the flood. Um, what evidence should we expect to find to help prove this possibility? Well, I think the massive mud fossils and, uh, you know, elephants and animals and human beings in the landscape go a long way. However, uh, going on, you know, Mud Fossil University's knowledge that we should expect to find transitional metals turn to ele other elements in the body and that depending on how the person dies is where these uh, heavier elements fall to. So in the example of the picture to the left, this is in Cornwall, you know, and when right beneath his feet is a Roman tin mine. And I don't think that's a coincidence that, you know, all the, he stood up and all the heavy elements fell to his feet where they were mining for tin. So when geologists say about veins, they are really actually talking about real animals and real veins, but no, they don't. See, they don't tell you the truth. They only tell you half truths. So when I talk about like certain cave formations and stuff like that, um, oh, it was shaped by you know millions of years, etc. It's not true because all it is is just you know, evidence that the earth isn't that long at all really.
going on, how long we know about for certain environments and stalactite microbe and stuff like that. You know, not the millions of years. You know, because it can grow in forty in certain conditions in in you know up to the half decent length. You know, it's not it's not true. So the mud fossils in the raggy and the two and the distinct colours of the beings as well as understanding transitional metals and petrification um, goes a long way to disproving the fear of evolution, wouldn't you say? So just a small bit on giants that have been found. We all have seen this before probably. I mean, these are historical documents that, you know, for example, Meat's bed was 13.5 inches long. And just a few other things about, you know, the skeleton that was found in Peru and how the child was under two years old but had an enormous head, you know, elongated eye sockets. And got your head. Uh, there were things in Peru, for example, the um, Atacama, not the Atacama, what's it called? Forget about it, it'll come to me. Moving on. These are in Crete, in a museum somewhere, I can't remember the museum name. Essentially, they don't put any scales up, and the only scale you get is from this, you know, from people. And they say they're votive, you know, and, and offerings. It's a joke. The Paracas, that's it, the, the Paracas skulls have been um, dated. Not dated, but uh, where they originate from, dated wise. And yeah, they come from the Middle East, which is very interesting when you do study you know the first digs in the middle in the Middle East and they find elongated skulls you know not humans so there is that I was gonna play this video well, I'm not gonna bother because it's not playing anyway but essentially it's a museum in Ecuador that's housing a 20 meter tall or uh, yeah 7 meters tall 20 foot tall seven meter tall uh, giant skeleton so in conclusion the ELF if all if all hypotheses are correct the ELFs should be talked about at school and they should be known at university level and they should be known as fat because it's based on a on a logical argument that there should be a precursor to the Paleolithic tool. Now that argument still stands today, you know? It's not going away anywhere. But they're ignoring it. So what, what does that say? It means they don't want you to know the truth. It means they don't want you digging around about your origins. It means that they just want you to fall in line and learn what they want you to learn. So, yeah, I highly recommend this book if you're into pa paleoanthropology or, you know, ancient history and the cover-up uh, of that because this book just totally dismantles it entirely, the fear of evolution and, you know, the, that basis on geology and stuff like that. Let alone my just pictures. I mean, they actually scientifically prove it. So really, does it matter, the Olympic debate? No, and that's because we need to reevaluate what we really think we know. We need to actually start again, literally. Um, in your mind, as to what is reality, because it's certainly not what you've been told. And so, history, unfortunately, is repeating itself because the greatest cover up of time, all time, has been history itself. Um, so we've 
we've been through this already, but you know, we've been pushed away from the Sumerian literature. We've been pushed away from the Bible, which holds the the, the understanding of where that comes from, so to speak. It's bad. So when you actually research ancient cultures and societies, secret societies, you know, you, you begin to understand what they're up to and why they're doing this to us and their plans, you know, they want to, they want to emulate the creation by destroying this world and creating a world in, in their image, so to speak. Now I'll say their image. What is the, am I really talking about? Well, it's to do with demons. It's to do with things that are coming into this world that these beings are being brought, you know, are being brought in through sacrifice, you know? So, it's so important that we understand these things, you know, understand that Freemasonry and, you know, the Catholic Church go hand in hand. We know about them, yet there's a there's a, a, a school next to every, you know Catholic churches. Now people say, oh yeah, but that's because it used to be like part of the community and back then. But it still doesn't doesn't change the fact. Why do you think it was even back then? I mean, we don't you know we know these things, yet nothing happens. We don't change anything. Until it's too late. It's always the case. So this statement by Dresden James was actually the opposite. <laughs> he was actually talking about how oh, um, people that believed that the earth was flat. Um, were mocking the people that believed back when it was a globe and basically he's a globalist so to speak <laughs> funny pun and yeah he basically the, I've, you know I've reversed it for the other way around you know I've used this statement essentially in, in the opposite of that manner you know the fact that the earth is created you know and it's not a globe but I'll be seen as a raven lunatic, nevertheless. So these people, one of them being Rothschilds, uh, yeah, they're just the the money side of the control system, and these are all the things that they're doing to us. You know, why they lie about reality, which is so fundamentally important to your existence. So, all truth passes through three stages. First, it's ridiculed. Second, it's finally opposed. And third, it is accepted as being self evident. Trust me, I've been through the ridicule and violently opposed section. I've been hit for my beliefs. It doesn't stop me. Anyway, this last picture before I leave is about a ne uh, uh, next video or the video after that about my discoveries of ancient cultures and their changing of landscapes so if you're interested in looking at landscapes please, you know uh, I look forward to doing this one for you thank you very much for watching please like and share